Welcome my carnivorous space rangers. Today these old iron meat hooks will become a barbacoa meat knife or some sort of churrasco knife or something, I don't know. Man these are so cool and the plan is to have them bring all of their character and breathe life into a new blade. So first let's spark test them and see if they're really iron. This one sparks like iron with short sparse sparks that don't flower. It looks like hammered iron. They're probably iron. We'll straighten them out, scrub them down, and get a better look at them and see what we have to work with before drawing out some plans. Wrought iron can be difficult to hammer without cracking if it has a lot of impurities. These are hammering very nice at low temperature. Maybe they were refined somewhat before being made into the hooks originally. We'll have a better idea of exactly how much metal we have left to work with when we get all the scale off. Removing this rust and oxides, we start to see the typical lengthwise type of grain or fiber type pattern found in wrought iron. Now let's chalk up some plans. I'd like to forge weld these together sort of in this manner and then we'll tw yeah can you draw that a little bigger buddy? There you go. And then twist it. Twisting it might give it some extra strength and a cool pattern. And then the ends at the handle will leave open. We have something special planned. We'll forge weld on some knife steel and then finish forging that into a proper knife. And come back and look at those loose ends at the handle. So what I had in mind was to take uh, two on the front and two in the back and make sort of a special guard, like a D. Bowie type of guard. And then one of them would remain for the tang of the knife and we attach it to a pommel. But you know, as I look at these hooks, they seem to come in three lengths. And to maximize use of all the iron, I'm going to rethink how I weld them together. We may try something like this instead. This way I'll probably be able to peel off the hooks from the spine or sides of the knife and bring them down into the blade and for some sort of uh, decorative effect. See if they're lined up like this and then we forge weld them. As long as we leave some of them loose at the ends, we can bring them down on the side of the blade and look at me drawing all these French curves and curls and stuff that I don't have a prayer of forging, much less forge welding. So to stabilize the pieces for forge welding, I'm going to tack weld them together. This area will obviously be ground off in the final knife, so we don't have to worry about the welding stick showing up. Now to fixate the front portion, I think I'll probably have to wrap some wire. Whoa. Uh, good job, Steve. Yeah, we might have to take just a little bit of that off. You look a little worried, buddy. You want to chat? So we'll see what happens. I'm starting to worry that this is going to draw out. You know, iron is very squishy. And it'll, it'll, it's going to condense. And it's going to get very uh, thin in the diameter. I think it's going to draw out, too. So I might draw it out, twist it, and then stack it and reforge it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just see what happens. But something tells me this is not going to go as smoothly <laughs> as I want it to. The white powder I'm applying here is called flux, it's borax in this case, and it removes the impurities and the oxides from the surface of the steel that would otherwise inhibit forge welding. 
So we'll put it on the steel, it'll melt and be drawn into all the crevices as we put it back into the fire to heat up the forge welding temps. Then we'll bring the piece of steel out and tippity tap it together, heat it, reflux it, and really start whacking on it and see where we get. So what's happening is that the forge welding hasn't been going all that well. A lot of places are in fact stuck together, but not everything. There's still some loose bits. So I'm going to twist it and bring all the surfaces into tighter contact so that when I hammer on them, there's more forge welding happening. So I've tapped that twist shut. I'm going to apply some flux and we'll bring it back to welding heat and smash on it. This seems to work quite a bit better. Put a little more twist in here. I want a little bit of a tighter pattern. Then we'll do some tippy tappy. Then I want you guys to think about something. So here it is. I recently bought some knife scales from a knife making supplier in Texas and it just went south. I never got what I ordered. I ended up out some money and I've decided to look into greenbergwoods.com. So I've ordered some stuff from them. It's all top notch, guys. I can't tell you how nice this wood is. If you go to their website, the piece of wood pictured in the ad is the piece of wood you get. If you use the code BEETLE, all caps BEETLE at checkout in the promo section, you get 10% off your order. The channel gets a tiny amount. So it's just a win, win, win. You guys should check into it. Well, this all looks a little squirrely right now, and you're probably wondering how it's all going to work out. And I am too. <laughs> but I think if we get some of these hooks pulled back a little bit, we'll sort of see some things take shape. And I think it'll become a little bit clearer what we're after.
Here we go. We're going to take this piece of 1075, put it in between the hooks like this, and forge weld all those surfaces, or at least we're going to try to. We have to do a little bit of shaping, so we'll throw the 1075 in the vise and come form the uh, spine to it a little bit. Maybe tighten things up a bit. We're going to make sure all these surfaces are as clean as possible. We don't want any oxides on there, or at least as few as possible, before we start forge welding. So I'm going to file them down as best I can, and the ones I can't file, I'm going to take this Fordham and try to get everything as clean as possible. Next we're going to forge our piece of 1074, or 1075 I guess. I want to do some shaping before we weld everything together because once everything is together, you know, when I hammer on things, I'm going to be affecting the iron on the back of the knife, on the spine of the knife, for example. And it's really soft. It's going to deform quicker than the steel will. So we could really upset our pattern that way a little bit. It's also going to have the uh, dangly legs at the handle end of the knife hanging off there. And it's a pretty thick piece of metal. So I think we should get the bulk of our work done right now while it's still easy to handle and it's not a complete mess. We are going to leave it a bit thick, right? We still have to forge weld to it. We still have to have some meat on there so that when we hammer on it vertically, uh, it doesn't deform or crumple or fold over. We're going to cross peen this to widen it up a little bit and start thinning out the bevels a little more, but we're not going to go nuts. Remember, we just need that meat for now. So just like we cleaned up our meat hooks, we're going to have to clean this up too for forge welding. We want a nice surface with no oxides and no scale on it. So this entire thing is going to have to be ground clean because we are going to try to forge those hooks to the side. Let's talk about all the things that could go wrong because I think there's a lot of them. Number one, we could get a failure to forge weld along the spine. And that's happened to me before when I'm trying to do these types of projects. We get areas that, that don't quite weld and there's some gaps. Number two is the forge welds along the sides. So I'm going to forge weld the spine first. In the meantime, oxides will be building up and scale will be building up on the insides and along the sides of the knife here and make those surfaces more difficult to forge weld. The second problem is that this is a very small amount of metal and this will cool very quickly when it comes out of the forge before I can hammer it. It may cool too much to actually forge weld so I'll try to I'll try to stick them you know to the sides of this metal sort of barred them and keep that heat close to this metal and keep it hot enough to forge weld. I'll run my forge with the air intake closed mostly so it'll be a neutral to reducing flame the neutral to reducing flame will inhibit scale to some degree, but again, I'm going to be coming in and out of the forge enough that once the metal leaves the forge, it oxidizes in the atmosphere. And so that's, that's still going to be an issue. 
And finally, I have to take care with these iron hooks. In the event that I do actually forge weld them successfully <laughs> into the side of this knife, I have to take care to not grind them off because they're very squishy. They're not going to embed themselves very deep in this metal. So I'll need to do mostly hammering to get the final blade geometry and not much grinding. If I grind it a lot, it's going to just take the hooks right off the surface. All right, let's get this tacked up and ready to weld. After I put this in the forge, I actually decided to turn it around and weld the butt end first. I think that'll be easier. Okay, I cannot imagine how that could have gone worse. <laughs> that was awful. So a complete total failure there. Well, there's nothing to do but get things reapproximated. I'll tack weld things together again, and we'll just take another run at it. But each time I throw this in the fire and take it out, I get more oxides, and the chances of a successful weld just go down. So it is looking like it's possible. I've just wasted an entire day. Now stay tuned for part two to find out. <laughs> 